Hey everyone, this is Dan with Shaner Designs. In this video, I'll be showing you how to use the iDraw 2D Pin Plotter from Unitech. So if we go to Unitech's website, you can see they have a couple of different options. Uh, we'll be using the A4 acrylic model. And then if you keep scrolling down, you get links to download the software and the firmware. Um, I'll be using Windows, so I guess this is also supported on Mac, but I don't know anything about that, so I'll focus on Windows. Um, you can also find the user manual for the software, and then if you keep scrolling down, you can find um, tutorials for how to put everything together, and a few videos. I'll also link all this stuff in the description down below. So let's get started. Uh, this is the README file for the firmware. Um, so this is telling you how to uh, get the bootloader installed on the control board, and that's basically what communicates between the hardware and the software. Uh, so it'll allow you to communicate with Inkscape. So this is all very important. Uh, also make sure to unzip the firmware folder and the software folder when you install those. Uh, that'll probably cause some issues if you don't do that. So this is Inkscape. Uh, you can see this interface is probably sort of familiar. Uh, we'll go ahead and find the text box tool down here and start typing. So we'll do hello world of course and then uh, go ahead and go to path object to path actually you need to select that so I use control A to select all and then go back there click it again so what that does that creates a path with your your text that it can trace so then we go extensions I draw I draw control this is the menu uh, for actually communicating with the hardware uh, so we'll, under the plot tab We'll click apply and that's going to send that path that we created to the controller. All right, so now that we've got the first plot working, let's go over to the Setup tab. Uh, this is where you'd find the options for adjusting your pin height. So I've already fine-tuned this at 75% and 85%, but let's go ahead and toggle the pin up and down and see what happens. So we'll check uh, that second option there and then hit Apply. Okay, so you can see here, each time I click the Apply button, it's moving the pin up and down. So to adjust the pin, I'll put it in the down position loosen the knob, and then just make sure the pin is resting firmly on the paper, and then retighten the knob. This basically sets the zero position on the pin and puts it just, just at the right position on the paper. Okay, so the next thing, now that we have the pin set up, we want to go to the timing tab, which is the next tab over. So up here we've got uh, the, the pin writing speed and then uh, some of the up and down speeds below. Really the writing or drawing speed is the most important thing. Uh, so once you get that set, go over to manual, and then you can, you can see we can uh, raise and lower the pin doing this as well. Or we can also walk the carriage. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna increment it one inch, and then I'll just click that three times and see what happens. <laughs> So if you click the drop down again, you can also change the Y position, or you can enable or disable motors. And that pretty much covers all the main uh, features you need in this tab. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and select everything and delete it, all the text that we had before. So I'm just clicking on it and hitting the delete key. Then if we go file, import, I can pull up a PNG logo that I already had saved. I'm just going to go with the default options here on importing, um, but you can you can play around with this if you want. Uh, you can see right now I can't actually click on it and move it around, so I'm going to go over here, select the cursor, 
and then that allows me to actually click on it and drag it around. Notice off to the right, I also have the transform menu open. So I'm going to close that and show you how to get to it. Uh, let's see, I got to fumble around a little bit here, try to remember where it's at. Okay, so it's under object and then transform down, down towards the bottom. I always like to have the scale proportionally checked, which um, that means if you change the width, it also changes the height by the same amount. You can see a 100% transform doesn't do anything. Um, so we want to do 200% to double the size. Okay, you can also move it. Um, so we'll move it to the right 20 pixels. And then because we have relative move checked, if we click, if we uh, type in zero, that doesn't do anything. So we have to type in negative 20. That'll move it 20 to the left. And if we uncheck relative, um, setting at zero moves it all the way to the left there. So I'll do control Z to undo. And then you can also see we've got scale, rotate, skew, matrix. So if I wanted to put maybe a pattern of six of these on there, I could do that as well. So now we'll go path, trace bitmap. Uh, so then this is going to bring up this menu here. I'm just going to go with default options, click OK, and you can see it turned my image black, which means that it worked. So I'll go ahead and close out of that. And then same thing as before, go to extensions, eye draw, eye draw control, get back to this menu, and then hit apply. So when I click apply, it's going to go ahead and trace that path out and plot it, um, similar to what it did before with the, uh, you know, when I had a text and I, I created a path from that. So I'm not going to show this plot because it takes a while, but this is the end result, which I think turned out pretty well. Uh, so at this point, you know how to import a PNG and create a path from that, or type in text and create a path that way. And then also you know how to set up the plotter, set up the pin height, and uh, all those settings. So this is definitely not an in-depth tutorial by any means, but hopefully it's enough to kind of get you started and let your creativity run wild from there. So uh, if this was helpful for you, please like and subscribe. Um, and then also comment down below if you have any questions about hardware or how anything works, how anything goes together, anything like that. I'll be happy to help out if I can. Um, but as always, I really appreciate you watching. So thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you next time.